On today's video, we will cover the steps to paint this Melter Demon. If you like this tutorial, you will find much more Dark Souls content, other board game unboxing, how to play videos and reviews on this channel. So if you're new, welcome and consider subscribing to always receive the latest updates. While there are two versions of this Melter Demon, the classic fiery one and the blue Smelter Demon, I chose to paint mine in red tones. If you wish to paint your Smelter Demon in blue, I'll leave some suggestions of colors that I would pick, but since I haven't tested, you'll be playing solo for this one. You need these colors for the red version, and I'd suggest exchanging the ones indicated for the blue on the right. The first step is priming the miniature, and if you still have any questions on how to do that, don't forget to check the how to paint miniature guide. For the second step, we will be using Flash Glitz Yellow. The objective is to have a nice first coat with the light yellow color to apply the other tones of orange and red above. Paint both horns, back of the head and the ugly face. There's a little eye on his chest to paint in yellow as well. I also painted some of the cracks of the armor that will be covered later on with metal colors. The blade of the sword needs the base coat too. I want to have the impression that the heat is coming from the center of the body, so I start a gradient inside out. Now that the base is done, let's try to make the gradient like the one in the box of the board game. The hotter the surface is, closest to the source, the lighter it is. Farther away from the source, where it's colder, you have more orange and red tones, until you reach the metal color. The next step is starting the gradient with Avalon Sunset. Going from the exterior parts to the inside to keep the center of the head as the source of heat. For the face, paint the extremities of the crater without going too deep on the center. On the back, I kept the middle part lighter to make the lava a little bit more dynamic. The spine is painted until halfway through and the sword on the exterior part only. For the next step, we have the Troll's layer orange. We will paint the center of the crater face with the orange. Apply a bit of orange on the border of the eye. We will create a gradient for the horns and the back of the face. Paint the cracks with orange going halfway through the middle of the yellow. I'm not being super precise because I know I'll cover with metal after. We will use the orange to create a gradient on the sword as well, leaving the center yellow. For the spine and center of the body, layer the orange on top of half of the Avalon Sunset. The last step of the gradient is done with Wild Rider Red. Apply the red over half of the orange on the extremities of the horn, the center of the back of the head and the middle of the crater face. Do the same for the spine and center of the body. For the sword, it gets really delicate, so alternating between the red color and water helps to spread the paint. The bottom of the pants is fully done with the red and we will paint with metal on top after. We'll mix Abaddon Black with Wild Rider Red to paint the very center of the face in a darker color, like the box art. We will now paint the metal colors with Iron Warriors. I start by the center of the model and cover the remaining parts of the legs, taking care not to let the paint enter the cracks that are already finished. I recommend you to wait for a part to dry before painting the others to avoid finger marks, but I'll speed up the process here. Do the same with the belt, the chest plate and the shoulders. Continue to paint all of the metal parts, including the hilt of the sword, leaving a little bit of the yellow shine through like molten lava. The horns are the complicated part. 
Use a fine brush to paint the elevated parts of the rocks of the horns with the metal color. You need to be extremely careful not to paint over the finalized gradient. Repeat the process for the back of the head and face. The pants armor, instead of using a regular brush, I dry brushed it. For the spine, I only paint with metal the elevated parts to make it look like it's made of metal that is very hot and just that part didn't melt yet. I use a dry brush layer of Balthazar Gold to mimic the red reflections of the environment on the model. Balthazar Gold is making the Iron Warrior look warmer, like the room's Melter Demon is located. I also use Necron Compound to create a different light reflection on selected parts. Lastly, we use Wild Rider Red to paint the connections of the big rocks of the legs to make it look like lava is flowing. And this is the final result! Let me know in the comment section if you will attempt to paint Smelter with this tutorial. If you haven't done so, hit the bell button to get a notification when the next episode is up. See you next time!